Um, my name is Frederick Jenka, and I'm the executive director of the Carolyn Vassa Bailey Foundation. It's a pleasure to have you here this evening. Um, we're a bit, bit rusty on the, on the virtual event, so please bear with us um, as, we, as we get back to um, this sort of program. Um, just so you know, this is being recorded um, and uh, there is a, the Q&A function. So, um, you know, feel free to drop any questions in as, as we go, but we'll, um, we'll take those, um, we'll start taking those probably in about, in about 30 minutes or so. Um, this should not be more than 45 minutes. And, and obviously we, who knows, we may linger a little bit over the conversation. <laughs> um, just as a reminder, we're doing this program this evening um, as part of our program around uh, the exhibition, Jovan C. Speller, Sounds for Survival. And we have a, an installation shot here um, for you to have a peek at for those of you who um, haven't seen it yet. And I will add when I was looking at these images that there is a sound component. So you definitely just, you can't get the, the full experience unless unless you're also um, uh, there in person and you can come visit us. So I'm hoping that if you haven't already scheduled your um, time to come by, um, please do let me know. Um, so uh, I, I guess, yeah, just to contextualize it a little bit as well, Jovan is our um, 2021 Carolyn Glasser Bailey Foundation Minnesota Art Prize recipient. And she is um, joining us uh, from Park Rapids, or uh, somewhere in Minnesota, probably Park Rapids. <laughs> and, um, and then we also have joining us today, um, Cole M. James, who uh, uh, participated in our Ohio Institute program in 2019 and 2020, and we've had a few um, ongoing projects with her. Um, we also have uh, Kelly Akashi, who um, was our 2019 Art Prize recipient and also were um, in, on year three of a 10 year project um, helping her build her artist archive um, and always committing to always having a piece on view for, for, this, uh, for this time frame. So uh, time's flying by Kelly. <laughs> um, so yeah, so her um, year three hand is currently on view at the foundation. And then Jonna Ireland, um, she, uh, we worked on a project for the Ojai Institute in, um, at the beginning of 2021, so from January to May. We did get to extend it a little bit, which was, which was wonderful, um, you know, to be able to kind of overcome that cusp of, uh, between closure and reopening. Um, so thank you, Jonna, for, for helping us um, through that space and time. Um, so um, I think we should have everybody in now. Um, and these nice to have some people join us. I'm gonna pause this so we can all get our um, faces up there. So welcome. It's so good to see all of you. I, it's such a treat to have to have you all on the on the screen here. So thank you. Um, we're gonna start um, by um, speaking with Jovan a bit about this about this installation and, and, and the work around it. And then um, you know each of the artists here have been invited because you know their work either very directly um, touches on photography or sort of originated or even, um, you know, goes back and forth through it. But I think all of them in, in, in many ways um, push and pull at, at what maybe one might expect photography to be um, and, you know, pushing it into sculpture, into, um, you know, larger installations and also pushing some of that language into other material. Um, so I'm excited to, to, to dig into that as well. And then we'll close up with some questions. Um, I'll probably have a couple, but hopefully you will too, our dear audience. So um, a reminder, yes, that um, we do have uh, that Q&A button. So feel free to, to drop those in. Um, so Jovan, you're coming up first here. Um, so why, I think, you know, why don't we talk about, um, yeah, talk about this installation you know, and kind of where, um, you know, where you're at with, with photography right now. I love the second part of that question. Can I just say, nobody's ever directly, directly asked me that before, like, where are you at with photography? Um, and I feel like that has been something that I've been pushing and exploring in my practice, but I've never, like, directly asked myself that question. So 
I'm excited about part two, um, but I'll talk first about the exhibition. So um, Sounds for Survival, <sighs> it's like that, right? It's like the definition of that sound, you know, for me. Um, it was something that I conceived of in the middle of the uprising here in Minneapolis. I was living in the middle of, um, of the uprising when that occurred in 2020. It's also happening right now, right now because of the mirror lock. Um, so, uh, so I was pregnant at the time. I um, was, I think, a few weeks away from giving birth to my second child. The city was on fire a mile away from my house. The National Guard were protecting the Mother Baby Center, which is like a weird, like a weird vision um, and an even stranger experience, super surreal, in the middle of a pandemic. And so like the normal experiences that, that I really expected, because this was my second child, and so I was really like prepared this time, right? Like I had um, a postpartum doula set up, um, you know, that was gonna like help me like cook and, you know, keep the house clean so that I can maintain my sanity while I'm trying to care for this like new fragile life and all of these things. But um, what was happening in the world, like it just wouldn't allow for any of that nurturing um, and any of that um, sense of, of peace and serenity. And so um, I felt like I needed to start to call on the ancestors for one, um, uh, to, uh, to, to help me create the feeling of safety and like a protective bubble around like literally the apartment building that I was living in at the time. Um, Cause there was just a lot of, a lot of things happening around us, but also just around our spirits and our hearts of like really, you know, tiny boys that are just full of life. And I wanted them to continue to be full of life. And I wanted my spirit to be able to nurture them as well. And so one of the things that I did was draw on um, the imagery that I already had um, available to me, because it was not a time to be out shooting new material and creating content either. Um, but I had shot a series of photographs in Windsor, North Carolina, which is where my father's side of the family is from. And so uh, the images really were um, capturing significant sites uh, that um, uh, held moments of, of family history. Um, so the central, the two central images in the exhibition, one is a picture of the woods. That's the background image of one. It's a picture of the woods. It's just what it looks like, but it's not actually the woods. It's a it's a um, unmarked burial site. Um, it's where um, formerly um, that that land was a plantation. And it's where slaves were buried. So it's where our my ancestors are buried. Um, and so uh, so we know that because of the stories that are told, right? And the memory that we keep. Um, and now this image is, is a part of that memory and a part of that history and a part of that archive. Um, so part of it was like creating this archive and the other part of it was um, kind of layering on additional materials and texture and um, color and elements and stories to, to try to expand the narrative of this like singular space, um, of this two dimensional space. So that's kind of like a two for one, like so the exhibition itself is about honest, honoring ancestry and creating spaces of protection and spaces that center and reflect blackness, literally and figuratively. Um, so the sounds that you hear when you go to the exhibition, it's a woman singing um, and that is a calling in this instance is a calling for the ancestors to come home. Um, that's, I'll leave it at that <laughs> in terms of how I use it in this, in this space. Um, but so, yeah, so it's this juxtaposition of like a calling home and an honoring of what was, but at the same time, like, you know, come into my life, come into my being and, and protect me and wrap yourselves around me um, at the same time. And then the creation of this archive as well, um, because it's really hard to have these stories and to know these stories and to feel them. And so I think that that's one of the things that I definitely try to do with my work and also touches on your second question of like, where am I at with photography? it is like my language, right? And I speak darkroom photography, right? Like I wanna be in the dark room. I wanna be mixing my chemistry and working with alternative processes. Like that's my jam, that's my happy place. The place that I'm in right now is going to be my darkroom in my house, right? It's 
obviously nothing's happening right now, but it will. Um, but at the same time, I feel like there's like uh, the stories that I'm trying to convey are so complex that I, per I personally don't know how to get them across in, in I don't want to say only an image, but like I need other elements to help me really get across um, what I'm trying to. So that's why I've started to kind of expand that work into um, mixed media work and into installation and bringing sound and things like that into it. Yeah. You're muted. Gosh, darn it. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yes, yeah, so thank you, Jovan. I think that's um, really you know, powerful insight. And, and um, I'm excited for us to kind of dig into this photography combo. Um, so why don't we have, um, let's have Cole go first. Um, and so yeah, let's, let's talk about photography, Cole. Uh, yes, for, I want to also like acknowledge what you were saying, Javon, also really kind of resonate. And we've had talks about this too, um, about the ancestral archive and the like trying to capture. Um, so I, I, feel, I feel you on all of that. Uh, where am I with photography? I've always been really in love with photography. When I studied for undergrad, we had to be proficient in two other fields. And I chose ceramics and photography uh, at that time, you know, 15 years ago. And currently what I'm fixated on are these archives of photographs my family has that tell stories that they've forgotten. And so when I come in and I go through all of these photos and I spent a week before my folks left for the South and I scanned all of these old photographs. And so they've been finding their way into the work constantly, um, recontextualizing what these photos mean and, and how they exist in my space because you know a lot of them are of more recent ancestors that I haven't really had a chance to engage with. And so for me, photography is a way to kind of capture that space and then recontextualize what has happened, what is going to happen, what is, is like in my body happening. Um, it's a really great place to kind of revisit. And I think specifically with being of African descent and living in the United States, there's a very specific set of photographs that we're used to seeing all the time. And so to be able to see and establish a different or a new or um, a concurrent lexicon of, of ancestral documentation of experience. You know, we got a little taste of it from uh, Van Der Zee, but then to have those photos within my family and be able to reference these stories to, to add to this narrative of, of what it means um, to have experienced Americas in this way, I think the great thing about finding those photos and recontextualizing it is it it's allowing me to create a new space in my DNA to also hold that and those memories that exist. Um, currently, I'm really into printing and digital, digital collaging, less about digital manipulation of photographs, but really like taking photographs collaging them in a digital space and then outputting them onto some kind of transfer material and then printing them using like watercolor and painting. And then, you know, incorporating that into just, just like Jovan said, like the need to not just put it on a wall, but have all of that other energy that comes along with this memory. And it kind of makes me think about when I was on my trip um, to the continent and whenever there is like a celebration like if someone's playing music everyone around has a role you're either dancing you're singing you're adding to the experience that people are having collectively and I think incorporating photo with installation you know it does a great job of that allowing for the experience not just of the image but all of that contextual energy around the actual image. 
Yes, it does. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. That um, that really is exciting. I think this it's something I hadn't necessarily thought about when everyone was coming together here, but this it really just just hit home with me. But this notion of ancestral archive, and so I think I actually want to pass it to Kelly right now. No pressure, Kelly, to to address that, but um, I just know that that's something that you know you're dealing with and working through, but um, especially from your most recent show at Get Bali. So, um, you know, um, yeah, I'm gonna toss, toss the ball to you. So feel free to, <laughs> okay. feel free to handle it however you like to. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to start out by saying, I love the dark room too. So I, <laughs> I was like very excited to hear that you still have a passion for the dark room. I am, you know, I, I went to undergrad, uh, I graduated 2006 when that's what you, that's what you did. Um, and I've been very excited to see, you know, undergrad students now get back into the dark room. I don't know what it means, right? <laughs> I'm really curious, but I'm, I'm like you, I'm getting back in the dark room more. I'm starting to, you know, figure out how to use experimental techniques to feed into the images I want to make. I have, it's messy. It's like, so like, I don't know if any of it's going to be any good. <laughs> But I feel a great need, like you building the dark room to just set up the parameters and just let it play out, even if it's maybe not the coolest thing for a minute for me. I'm not sure about my own <laughs> capabilities. Um, with all that said, um, I was just really happy to hear that. And I just wanted to share that passion and that joy of that dark room space with you, the space of not knowing what's gonna happen, which for me working with film too, there's such a great joy of not knowing. Um, and maybe this will nicely go into what, what photography means for me now and where I'm taking it, which is I make sculpture. I don't, <laughs> I don't make a lot of um, photographs anymore. And the ones I have been making are cameraless because I feel like, um, you know, it's taken years for me to kind of, um, process why I moved into sculpture. Um, and I think for me, um, what was really exciting about photography was the material engagement. But um, I think I've, I've been so into that because I think it's open to chance even more than uh, taking and then trying to create it, let's say an accurate print or a traditional print. I like this idea that the handmade print maybe allows for more chance to happen, more of like, you know, life to bleed into things. Um, and it's one thing I really responded to in the show is the, the inclusion of the black acrylic, um, thinking about it as an image that, you know, lets the environment in, but also allows for um, things that you can't predict, an image you can't predict, an image you can't control, that's always changing. Um, and that, that, yeah, it's like you're, you're, as an author, you are setting up the conditions for it, but then people can form these relationships that maybe you can con continue to learn from. Um, and in terms of like an archive and an archive that includes ancestors, like it, you know, it's hard, you know, to me, an archive is, is limitless. It's going to grow. It's never going to, um, things are going to enter it that you think aren't important and then become the most important thing, or things are going to enter it that you think are the thing. And then at some point, I think for me, um, as I move on, I'm like, was that the thing to focus on, actually? Um, so that's what's so great about an archive as opposed to, for me, creating a singular photograph is I like this idea that, again, like life can enter, the unknown can enter, um, and they're all working together to create this kind of um, bigger, living, growing document. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, personally, yeah, the work I'm doing, I'm, I am looking at a site that my uh, family was interned in. So I'm also going back and thinking about um, the experiences my family had there. Um, and I don't know if they are, my father isn't around anymore. He didn't want to talk about it. Um, but I really, like you, it's like for me, the geology, like that memory of the site, it spans many generations. And there's something about just being there that I think you can't totally encapsulate in a photo. And I, I totally relate to this desire to like, let, like I said, life just like bleed in and, um, you know, shape that. So, so thank you for, I, I really enjoyed hearing you talk about the show and it really uh, reinforced some of the ways I was processing it. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, I think this, um, what you bring up with the plexi is, is, is I mean, I think that's, what I was feeling, but I didn't, I didn't actually 
kind of put it so succinctly as you did, but you know, I think there's something to the disorientation that um, I really responded to and, you know, well, I mean, I think the reflection always implicates the viewer too, right? Like you always, you always have that element, but, um, uh, but, but it is constantly changing, you know, and I'm, I'm in there sitting in the, sitting in the gallery and the morning light is different than the evening light. And, and again, it, um, you know, the space um, is really alive. The work is really alive in the space and I'm grateful um, to Jovan for sharing that with us. Um, but thank you, Kelly. That was, that was such a, a wonderful way to, to put it. Um, so I'm gonna, again, pass the ball to Jana. Hi, everyone. Thank you, audience, for coming. Thank you to the other panelists. It's been so wonderful to hear all of you talk about photography. Photography is my primary medium, so just about everything else I do is either kind of generated by photography or is a response to photography. And I'm just all over the place with photography all the time. I'm working on several of my own projects. So some is black and white, some is color, some is rectangles on the wall, and some is designed to be an object that you hold or something that you walk around. And I'm teaching photography. So I'm just talking about it all the time, thinking about it all the time. and trying to, for me, I think teaching helps me figure out why I do what I do. Maybe if I weren't teaching, I wouldn't be investigating all those parts of my practice, but I feel as though I have to be accountable for all of these different steps. So I am thinking about what I'm doing as I'm doing it and continuing to think about it after it's done and figuring out ways to explain those things to students and also explain why photography is valuable. Um, you know, that it show it teaches us all these things about the world, but it also connects us to our past, why we need to be visually literate and know how to read images accurately and how to actually get the, the true information <laughs> from underneath whatever is actually in the image. And I'm just sort of, you know, all of these things are just constantly swirling around as I figure out what the next part of my practice will be and what, how to wrap up each project or, or what I'd like to do next. And I guess that's, that's where, where I am sort of, which is again, all over the place, many places with photography. <laughs> Thank you, Jonna. Just you speaking now is reminding me of, again of what, what um, you know, Kelly was saying it's just sort of like life is bleeding into it, right? Like into the into the work, and I that's something I think that that really connects all of you actually in, in a way from from my perspective is that um, you know you've you've created these um, maybe opportunities for things to kind of come in and for there to be some surprises, um, and so I think um, that also offers the viewer the unexpected. And I think that's something that I appreciate too about each of your practices too, is that there are these moments, um, you know, sometimes I, I feel like I've been talking to you or like we're texting, you know, each of you individually and like, I'm like, oh, I kind of know what shows you're doing what this, you know, like what's happening, but then each one of you will throw me a wonderful surprise. And we like, oh, I totally didn't expect that to be happening. Or, you know, I think um, as an artistic practice, or as a practice for artists, right? I think it's good to also keep some secrets, right? And <laughs> not, not reveal everything, um, uh, you know, at the same time. So um, I think there's a few things that have come up that I've just kind of like little, little quotes that, um, you know, I'm just gonna kind of throw out there. And if there's anything more that, you know, either of you would like to kind of chime in on, um, you know, feel free, um, mute yourself, but um, thinking about the geology of sight again, and I think with, again, uh, with all of your practices, this, you know, perhaps sometimes landscape doesn't necessarily read as geology or this idea of kind of a deeper underneath, um, you know, but when you start talking about things under the ground, for example, Jovan, um, you're really talking about the ground and it's not just a photograph of trees, right? Um, I think what's powerful about the installation to um, in Ojai is, you know, that that decision to um, to put that that piece of plexi on the um, on the floor creates this this void. Um, you know, I, I 
it's it's incredibly powerful to, to really just kind of look down. Um, and again, that's connecting you to the site, the, the, the geology, the physicality of the landscape. Um, uh, and then, um, uh, yeah, this kind of space of not knowing, again, physicality. And I'd start thinking about like, how do photographs become physical with each of your practices? You know, I, with Jana, you know, I love this movement into, into sculptural pieces, right? Those kind of like book frame, you know, large sculptural pieces and how the, the, the photograph is, is um, you know, physically in the space with you. Um, or Cole's, um, you know, I know you're, you're kind of um, pushing out on this, the project of the hard to hold, you know, this, that it was, um, you know, a, 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 a artist book essentially, but that you at the end kind of made that decision to embed in concrete. So it becomes this, you know, sort of very physical, again, um, physical uh, manifestation of, 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 of emotion and memory and, uh, and a container for those, for those stories and, and, and um, traumas. And, um, you know, I think, um, again, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly has, has moved these material, you know, relationships, you know, the candles, the, the, um, uh, the bronze, the wax, the, the, um, and now the sculptural, you know, I feel like, again, these kind of like, one-to-one -one relationships um, that that are very physical and their work itself now is very physical right Kelly like you're 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 physically in there um, processing things so um, yeah so those are just some kind of you know thing and again the ancestors like how are you kind of like you know either creating documentations or creating these archives or tapping into archives um, I think is also something really wonderful that that kind of pulls you all together so um, I'm just going to kind of throw it out there. And then um, I did see one question come in, but if there are more questions, please feel free to um, drop them in the q and I I did want to respond to, I was so feeling that um, when you were talking about when we, you know, placing the plexi on the ground and um, creating that void, it made me think about what it felt like to be in the process of photographing those spaces. It was walking into the unknown, right? Like I, first of all, I'd never been to Windsor, North Carolina. Why would I ever be in Windsor, North Carolina? I didn't know that we had family in North Carolina. These are not things that we talk about. Um, and like, I had like a, I had a 90 year old relative that was like, you know, still there, still alive, had lived there her whole life. And so like held so much family history, all the cousins in the world and second cousins and third cousins. And then like, you know, you check into the only hotel in town and like, there's a whole bunch of people named Speller when my entire life I had gone with like not meeting anybody else named Speller anywhere else, right? So, um, so the process of like, you know, it, going to do these photo shoots, it was such a discovery. All of it was walking into the unknown, you know? And so like the, the physical process of taking the, taking the image was like filling these voids. But then I love this idea of like recreating the void to show what it's like to like make these discoveries because like making the discovery is a part of the journey, you know? And it's a part of the story that you wanna convey. So. I don't know if I knew I was doing that. I, I should just, <laughs> I, that's what I meant to do. <laughs> and, you know, cause I just be out here thinking ahead y'all. Um, but yeah, no, I love that. I love that. I'm, and I love these conversations cause it does make you consider some of the like, like choices that you make where like, you know, as an artist, your body just like throws you into making certain choices. And you're like, and then you're asked to explain them later. And you're like, all right, I got this. You know, your eye starts twitching and you're like brain work. Um, and you come up with something, but then like through these conversations, it does kind of like highlight like, oh, that is what I did. I'm going to keep doing that. That actually feels good. That feels right. Um, yeah. And then just to answer the question in the chat. Yes. Yes. That will be um, a project that, uh, that, that continues. I'm um, in the process right now of um, interviewing relatives and um, not only making an archive of uh, the spaces that we inhabited, but of the stories of people's lives. Like I don't, I've never met any of these people. And so I'm recording um, uh, a lot of family history right now. And some of those recordings are a part of installations as well. Um, a part of one of the, I have an installation called In Lottie's Living Room um, that um, I'm gonna remount, I think 
in December at um, Augustana. Um, and uh, so her voice uh, is in is in that installation. It's basically like a house with three photographs, um, a portion of a chair, which is like a fragmented memory um, a shelf and a record player um, that uh, where she's talking about how her father was poisoned. So it's like these, you know, like little snippets of her memory, my memory, and then like building, in this case, like a physical house to hold those memories. So it'll be physical archive and a digital archive that I'm working on. I kind of was taken by what you said too about the physicality and like, please ignore whatever sounds, it's lit in my neighborhood because it's Super Bowl weekend. Uh, if it's happening all outside and I'm happy for people living their best life. Uh, but what I was, what I was thinking about is the you're talking about the physical, right? So I feel like the through line is that we're all trying to get to this tangible understanding of something, right? And as we go through it, we're like moving through these materials in order to get the materials to reveal this thing that we can't name. And so I think it's great um, that we're, we're talking about how the physical is sometimes all, also the experience of going through it and not just objectness. Like the presence has like a physicality to it. I think it's really awesome to think about. Um, and when I made Heart to Hold, it was like images of, of a family member who had lost to violence, right? And to, to being impacted by the system. And I was like, this is literally hard to hold, but I, and these photos that I was actually physically, I was like, how do I, how do I take some of these photos that just look like, you know, a man dressed up in a suit holding my, my little brother, but the weight of the experience and how that impacted was like, I have no other choice than to just like solidify this in concrete. Um, and then try to do something different to each photo with a different texture, with different layers, with different um, sheets of transparency on top of it, sometimes incorporating the actual photograph, sometimes uh, taking the photograph and translating it through another surface because it was, you know, it's this unknown space and it wasn't until after it was over that I even had a name for it. It was like, oh yeah, it this is, this book, book, right, is hard to hold because it's a book embedded in concrete. It's like, you can't put it on a shelf. You can't just like, like flip through it. And it's like, oh, this is literally, it's hard to hold. And I think that's a beautiful thing about exploring photography and, and, and letting it be all these other forms is, is that it, it does allow you to kind of translate that physicalness or presence of experiencing either the actual location of this space or the event or the person or just that image that's there, you know? Yeah, I'm really responding to this unknowing, this conversation around unknowing and, and the representation of a void. Um, I mean, I think uh, I respond so much to what you said, Cole, also. And, um, you know, I'm also thinking about um, this, the space emotion needs, like it's such a big part, I think, of what we're talking about, but it's not something you can even necessarily verbalize. Like we have so many words for emotions, but like, how do you distill something that complicated into an emotion to visit like a site like that? You, you can't just spell it out. I, I can't spell it out. I'm just, <laughs> you know, and maybe that's like also a reason to be, um, the way I think of it is like constantly uh, meandering, like moving around like the space of what you're talking about, because you can never really fill it. Like to fill it almost feels incorrect. It's like you, you get people to sense it, you know, like you're talking about the weight of the book, the difficulty. It's like you're getting people to sense it somehow, but to try to like fill it. And maybe that's something that's really beautiful about photography or thinking about the archive in relationship to photography is that the photograph's a fragment too. And I love this idea of like, the, the fragmented chair, I think you talked about Jovan in it. Yeah, I love that you're bringing in the fragment into that because I'm like so much, I think when these stories aren't passed down, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with fragments, we're dealing with things that are inside of us that we can feel, um, but they can't be just materialized simply. So it's just really lovely what everyone's 
saying. I really respond to it. I can't wait to get up there and see Jovan's installation, figuring out how to talk about family and memory and photography is something I've been working on for a long time, still figuring out about maybe 10 years ago, I started traveling to visit my family in South Carolina, so <laughs> nearby and photographing them and just trying to put some of those stories in order and get to know people who were part of a side of the family that I knew nothing about. And I never figured that work out as art. So it's still useful to me as like, as family photographs, as these stories that I can now tell, but I haven't figured out how to put them out into the world in a way that is legible for other people or that other people it's still something really struggling with but now by this time of course I have my own children so I'm not only constantly generating these family photographs I'm also using them in my work so there are these two directions these pictures I'm taking now of my family are taking and I don't know how that will connect with what I did in the past or if it ever will but it's something I maybe your work will help me figure it out I don't know let me tell you, it is such a struggle. It is such a struggle. And so um, the work from Windsor, North Carolina has now had like four iterations. Like it stretches across three series and like four iterations, right? So there's Relics of Home, there's In Lottie's Living Room, there's Sounds for Survival one and two, right? <laughs> so um, Sounds for Survival is kind of this like growing, I've accepted it, but also it was created as, as like this kind of iterative thing because it so depends on the space. It depends on the people. It depends on what's happening with me, you know, at the time and like, how do I want, because it's part of it is about how I want to be reflected too, and then how I want to reflect back. So um, so, but all of the imagery, like the, all of the photography is from like the few times that I went to North Carolina to shoot this, these same like three or four sites. Um, and so it is something that constantly is growing. I, I feel like, I feel like I have a grasp of it, like have some understanding of it. And then I learned something new and it told, it like throws everything else out of whack, you know? And so then it becomes like, becomes this like, um, like durational thing too. It's like, it only represents the knowledge I had at the time or like my truth at the time or the truth that was told to me at the time by this one side kind of a thing. And then the other part of constantly representing, you know, your, your, your personal history or your family or whatever is like, what are they going to say? You know, like the first iteration of Relics of Home, like, you know, my, 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 family story was there was a lot happening there you know my father sold the last bit of land that we owned you know in North Carolina um right from out like from from under his brothers kind of a thing one brother didn't care one brother kind of lived there so you know there's like all of the family story drama histories etc on top of like the narratives that you're trying to like uncover reveal and figure out what's you know, like we always feel like we need, like we're responsible for, we're the griots, we're like responsible for like passing things forward. And then it's like, okay, what needs to be passed forward? Like some of this maybe can be left behind, you know? And so, cause I know that like, I know I go to some exhibitions and there's certain like historical uh, things that are supposed to represent historical black culture that I'm like, y'all could have left this way far behind for real. You did not need to bring this forward at all. It did not need an exhibition. <laughs> okay. Nobody needs to collect this. Um, but, but, you know, but it's still here and it still persists and progresses into the future with us. So I'm, it's another thing that I'm cognizant of and feeling responsible for is like what from the past gets to be brought forward. I also want to kind of, uh, I don't know, like, to me, it's connected because, you know, it's all connected, but the Carolina connect that's going on, uh, you know, my family lives in South Carolina now. They left 
the, from the Midwest to California, from California to South Carolina. And there's something about uh, the earth of the Carolinas that I think is, is worth exploring. It's, I could like, I, I know, for me, I know what it is in, in reference to my own selfness, but there's something about Northern and Southern Calif uh, California, Cal Carolina, that's really interesting in regards to like, not only photography, but also um, location and space and earth. Like, you know, um, a lot of indigo production happened there. The reason why we still have certain kinds of rice is because of the Carolinas. There are all of these like connections and ties to history and people um, and developments of people in the Americas, specifically in the Carolinas. Um, so something that that I, I jotted down real quick was also, you know, things that we don't talk about. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know if, you know, this is kind of my closing, you know, maybe it's a little provocative, maybe it's not. <laughs> but um, is it kind of like the American experience? Like, is it is it is it about like, migration and change and adapting and, or being forced to, or, you know, is it, you know, the kind of like collective forgetting, forced, you know, forgetting, you know, what's the, um, you know, uh, things that, you know, you're not supposed to talk about and, and you know, because they're either hard or they were um, maybe detrimental to sort of integration or assimilation, sorry, that might be a better word. You know, I, I know like, for example, my mother doesn't, you know, really speak Spanish, you know, because her, her Spanish speaking parents didn't, you know, encourage that in the forties in, you know, uh, where like New Mexico, Texas, or, you know, Colorado, even California, right? Like those, that time you didn't necessarily celebrate speaking Spanish, right? So, uh, but that's not necessarily anything we talk about. <laughs> so anyways, leaving, leaving that to the, to the crew. And then again, if anyone has um, some questions, um, drop them in the Q and A and then we'll be wrapping up shortly. I think Jovan touched on it too a little bit about, um, there are these narratives about identity that exist. And coming up as an artist, I remember seeing this to be like, uh, I appreciate that that exists, but it's not necessarily how I want to articulate this experience. And I think find, trying to find ways to just discuss and talk about, you know, because yes, it's about migration. Yes, it's about change. It's also about displacement. You know, it's also about oppression. Um, and how do you how do you have a conversation that reminds specifically people that are from that experience all the possibilities that of growth that exists within that? Um, I think like right now I'm on this like mission to like talk about history in a way that just reminds people of what their DNA is capable of, you know, not the narratives that we could create, that we could build about even little things like, yeah, we don't know to a certain extent. You know, my whole project was just about what I don't know and embracing that. I don't know this. So these are the things I'm going to embrace. I'm going to find what's familiar and I'm going to build on that in a very, uh, uh, I'm going to move forward in that in a way of truth. And I'm going to move differently instead of responding to oppression I'm going to look specifically for opportunities of growth, opportunities co of connectivity and community. How do I tell these stories and talk about the weight of, you know, not so much the, the system impacted folks that are in my, everybody in my family is system impacted in some way, shape or form. But how do I talk about that weight of not having them in my life? Because that's really what it's about. Not the politics, not these days, the fact that a human being that is of my bloodline, our time together was cut short. Because of these systems, yes, but the point is my time with them was cut short. You know, so 
it is about yes and simultaneous histories, you know, like they're not, there's not one or the other, like all of these things happened at the same time. Um, and people were having, having different experiences simultaneously, you know? So I think Jovan talked about it. It's like, mm, what is it that we need to talk about? How do we, how do we move away from always highlighting our struggles and our pain and our bodies and pieces? Like, how do we have a, a conversation about oppression that's also about the people that still exist? you know, and the stories that are still there. Uh, and again, like I said, it's like using photography to, to expand is not the really like word, maybe like uncover or reveal, you know, uh, it's already expansive. It's just what people choose to see in those spaces. So, yeah. One thing that goes on for me with family stories is that both of my parents are artists, both of them are writers. And so there may be a story that I kind of want to tell, but I want to give them the opportunity to tell it first. Or there may be a story that I know, but my cousins don't know because I have the parent who tells me everything, but you know, they have the parents who are still trying to protect these secrets. So, you know, there are times when I want to just tell everyone everything and have a big family conversation and make it part of my work and times where I want to protect and where I want to do what Cole was talking about, where I don't just want to make it about these really traumatic things that have happened. And I don't want to make it about the way society has oppressed people or the way family relationships have oppressed people, which is a, a major theme on both sides of my family. I think just the, the, way, uh, the way family life and protecting people and the way people try to protect you by maybe shutting down a bit of, how, of who you are. Um, so I'm, still, I'm thinking about that a lot and maybe one day I'll be able to tell those stories, but I'm still protecting some people, I guess, protecting myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it's funny. So I, I um, I'm just thinking about uh, the family members that I, that I try to depict in, in my work and the conversations that I have with them, like leading up to that, right? Like even, so both of my parents, I think they're artists. My mom would completely disagree, but she's a singer. So like, um, and my father's a musician, he's a percussionist. And so I ta just talking to them though about visual art, it's a completely different language, right? And so then just talking to like the other family members who have no, experience at all with the arts and you're like yeah so I'm working I'm working on this artistic series and I'm going to depict it in this way and I'm going to show it in that way and like are you cool with having your photograph like a picture view somewhere they're like yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> like I know that they don't fully understand to what scale their personal image is going to be like splattered across you know the walls of some gallery or you know as a promotional item for the press of the of the show etc cetera, etc cetera. so like even just you know um trying to have those conversations get permission and like you know do things in a, in a really open transparent way is really hard just in terms of like language like the the art language that I speak you know uh I I feel like even though we've had this conversation and even though you said you're good with this I feel like you're not if you really knew you might not be good with this so that shifts like what and how I show as well just because I know that there is still like a, a gap there um so I, I try to account for that gap and then also just be like hey look what I did you know just so that I know like are you okay with this so if I if, if I tour it is that cool is you're okay with this and you'll be okay with it again you know um but so just responding to the the question in the chat um about whether or not um our artwork has affected or trans transformed relationships with family and have any family members learned something about themselves um, or you through your artwork and is that feedback uh, or feeding back into your work again um, I feel like not like my family like they haven't um, I don't know what they've learned from the work 
or if anything has come across, but I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's helped my family understand me as a person more, right? My mom was like, your brain, I tell you, your brain, the things that come out of that brain, like it's fascinating, you know? And my dad's like, you know, like this pride thing happens. And so like, if that's all the, you know, that can be like, that's okay, you know, because there's, you know, relationship things, you know, we all have our relationship things. So like it creates, it creates an opening. Like, I think the work has created an opening. Um, that's not a void, but that can be filled with some side of some sort of relationship. That's what's happened with my work and my family. Anyone else want to go for it? Any any closing thoughts, Kelly? As we start wrapping up here. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I was really enjoying what everyone was saying, and um, I don't know if I have a, a unique angle on it. I mean, um, what can I say? I, I'm, and I'm, I think part of this is I'm also learning right now. Like, I really appreciate this conversation around, um, I don't know. I, I can't think of the right way to put it because I think it was phrased different ways, but like not just thinking about trauma, but thinking about growth or positivity or or you know, even joy or something. It's something I'm thinking about myself. Um, you know, when I did the show that you mentioned, Freddie, and um, I, I, I'm working on it still, the growing archive, it's, it's, it's never done. You just like have these little, these chapters maybe that, that keep filling out the story. Um, like somebody really wanted to ask me about like this passed on trauma. They, they kind of went to me and they were like, tell me about the trauma you've inherited from your family being incarcerated. And I was just like, what? like, <laughs> like, why is this the question? Like, like maybe some of this might come up in conversation, but like, it, it just gave me this moment um, that I think I'm still unpacking. And I just, you know, I think everything everyone's been saying has been really helping me process that and think about um, the conversation I want to shape in the future. So so thank you. I'm really happy to be a part of this conversation about photography, but maybe how photography connects us to the past, to our personal past. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great way to to, to kind of sum it up. Um, and uh, it is expansive and um, uh, reveals and has the potential to reveal. But I think I guess something that I'm taking away too is is um, you know the agency of the individual or the agency of the artist to, um, to guide where memory lives or like, like, I think what Jovan was saying is like, what do you choose to bring with you? You know, like some people kind of like force you to take things with you, right? <laughs> You're like, I'm sorry, I didn't really need that. <laughs> but then maybe there's one of those things that you didn't think you needed that that ends up being something that's gonna that's gonna help you even further. So um, I think this that kind of openness um, is something that I'm taking away in terms of um, you know how how we how we approach moving forward. Right, that there there will be will be some surprises, um, taking some joy in the unknowing um, as we as as we all collectively move forward. Um, so thank you all. Um, Jana, Cole, Javon, Kelly. It's been wonderful to share some virtual space with you. <laughs> and thank you to our, um, our audience for joining us this evening. Um, the next conversation for, um, uh, as part of Javon's show is going to be on um, uh, Friday, February 25th. And um, Javon will be joined with Diani Whitehawk, who was our, um, 2020 Car uh, Carolyn Glasso Bailey Foundation Minnesota Art Prize recipient. And um, she is going to be opening um, uh, her, her, her solo show that's traveling, will be opening at MCA um, Denver um, quite shortly. And I'm looking forward to getting out there to see that as well. So it'll be a treat to have her join us. Um, she and Javon are our buddies. <laughs> um, so thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. And we look forward to seeing you soon. And please do let me know when you'd like to come by um, and check out um, Jovan's show. Um, it'll close uh, February 26th. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Bye. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Freddie. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good to see you. Yeah, good nice to see you. Go, guys. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Is it cocktail it's, hour? Okay. Bye. Yeah. Guys. Oh, <laughs> bye. No bye. 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 Bye.